Uh, hey, everybody. Welcome to another exciting Fixing Joe episode. I, I thank you so much for tuning in, being a fan. I hope you have the premium app and you become a premium member. That would be even better. Sign up. Get the apps. They're free. You can go on JoeMatterese.com. You can you can become a premium member right there. As you make the list, drag out the last word. And, and my my guest today is uh, is Pete Dominic, who's been on the podcast before. Thanks for uh, sitting in, Pete. I'm so happy to be here. I love you. Let's get to uh, a little bit about you, and then we'll get into the podcast stuff later. All right, and uh, and me. Because you're here to help me. That's what Fixing Joe is all Can about. Can we just talk about my most recent uh, dramatic uh, almost divorce? Or do you, are there other things that you want to talk? Because that to me is the most interesting, fresh thing. But whatever you want to do, buddy. Well, we'll start with me, and then we're going to do a, a conversation Oh, I thought we were starting with that. me. No, it's Fixing Joe. I start know, but you me. said we're going to start with you. <laughs> That's the only reason I submitted that. Okay. And now uh, well, those were you. just plugs. That wasn't about me. I meant my problem. If you played the tape back, you would have heard. Do did, did you guys not hear them say we're going to start with you? And then I suggested with what we started. A- with. Ask the camera guys and the I'm uh, and them. the guy who's scrolling the teleprompter. They've yet- what, what did I say? You could talk from they- a distance. I heard we'll start with you. Yeah, they- start with me, right? No. Start with Pete. Did I say? I heard Pete. Okay. All right, I'm wrong then. I have ADD a little bit. We'll the, go to. Did Pete. you hear the teleprompter guy at the, at the very end goes? But I don't know what happened. Like, quit, like maybe that didn't happen. He just as he's like in a, trouble, he doesn't want to get in trouble. I think, think I, it's it's fun feeling like I'm I have power. I have no power, dude. Sorry, you I have, called you. The teleprompter, teleprompter guy has Let's, way more power. He's a than human me. with a name. What is it? Matt. Sorry, Matt. Matt. Matt and, sorry I knew about that. that. Too, All right, Pete. So All you right. so you. What recently, you about Matt's problem? I'm not used to you being open about talking about your life because I've done podcast with you in the past and i've done some projects with you where we've shot some things and usually you're like i don't want to get super personal but today you do, do. I really yes huh. now is this because of therapy now that you just started five weeks ago that you were a little more open um no is this the, what put you in therapy this this issue yeah. this issue yeah back in therapy yeah okay so how long you've been back in therapy uh, i think six weeks end of march i went back six weeks yeah and it's a therapist you saw in the past yep I saw her for about a year in the past, and she knows my wife really well, so Mm -hmm. that's helpful. And what made you stop when you were seeing before? Money. Money. I think so, yeah. But weren't you making like the most you've been making I was, and then about a year ago, I I quit and stopped doing everything I was doing but my radio show and stand-up. What were you doing? I was also warming up the Colbert Report every night for Mm -hmm. Comedy Central, and I was a CNN contributor getting paid a shit ton by both of those. Would you have been happy if Colbert and you you were do, still doing warm up there, and then he was going over to Letterman, and he said, "Pete, I no. want you to be my no, guy." No, because I left there because I didn't want to do that anymore. I didn't want to be opening for someone else every, okay. every night. Mm-hmm. I want to be on camera myself, and and also, uh, mainly the the truth is the hours. That was late, and my radio show moved to mornings. That was the main catalyst for leaving that. And finally, the most important reason really was I wanted to be with my family more. Right. So I stop making that a lot of money okay. so I could be with them more. So you didn't kick yourself when you were like, oh, fuck, he's doing Letterman. I Not at all. Me. But, what, you know, when you think about it, I know I worked for Colbert for six years. I opened for him for six years. It shouldn't be too hard for me to get booked to do stand-up set on the new Stephen Colbert Late Night Show. Right? Oh, that's true. You know, Unless I mean, he doesn't like you for some reason. Like no, a personal... we're good. No, I, I wrote a letter, an article about him for the Daily Beast saying why he'd be the best uh, person. He emailed me directly and said, I'm going to use that article for my obituary. We're good. Now, is his person off stage much different than the character no. he plays? Is that the, is Oh, that, yeah, is, yeah, is that yeah. A... The character he plays is a character. It's nothing like who he really is. No, no. Not at all. He's a super great guy, really, really genuine, really thoughtful, generous, mm-hmm. um, kind-hearted family man. And he can do stand-up. He can do anything. Really? Yeah. But I think we're talking about me. Yes, that's true. I mean, my career has watered down to commenting on other comedians' <laughs> careers. <laughs> I was on Entertainment Tonight talking about Stephen Colbert's career. That's what they want to hear. Yeah. Hey. yeah. I, I, I got to get, li- I gotta get, I gotta get first downloads. Time the people, first time uh, people in my community knew that I was even in this business. <laughs> I saw Pete on uh, TMZ and Entertainment Tonight. Oh, all right. So, so, so back then you stopped going to therapy. Yeah, I think it was because of the money. I, I I don't know. I think that's why. I can't quite remember. I can I know you because you're one of my best friends in comedy. We've known each other. I always got to equalize that. What? In comedy? I'm one of your best friends. You're period. one of my best friends. You're one of my best friends. Period. Okay, that's, that's true. It has nothing to do with comedy. comedy. You just one of my best friends. You don't have a lot of really close friends outside of comedy. That's true. I don't and really. the ones that you do, you 
trash to me. <laughs> Off air. <laughs> that ones? fat guy, Jeff. Oh, I wouldn't call Jeff like a best friend. Jeff's more of a. Uh, I'm just kidding. A uh, guy. Andres that keeps calling. Trash Andres. <laughs> He never said a bad thing about Andre. No, Andre's How can great. you? Nice skin world. Uh, anyway, back to me. Yeah. So, uh, as a guy that is values you as a close friend, I don't picture you quitting therapy because of the money. I picture I, you being a guy that goes, "I think I'm better." Honestly, I don't need that's this possible. anymore. That's possible. I I really do think it was because of the money. I didn't think I was getting maybe the benefits I needed out of it. Um, my schedule was crazy at one point. I really can't honestly. It could have been any of those, all of those factors at once. Now, how did your wife at the time feel about you stopping therapy? I don't remember having a conversation with her about it. She didn't care. I never came she, up. I don't think she loved some of the things that were coming out in it anyway. I don't, okay. I don't know. I don't she know. might have been against it. She wasn't against it. Was she going to therapy then? No. But she's done a lot of, a lot of work on herself. Uh huh. A lot. Okay. Yeah. She meditates every morning. She's done so much self-help mm -hmm. and so much introspection were you guys having any of the problems that you were just having five weeks ago that put you in therapy back then yeah the problems that 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 came up were a long time coming and they were almost 100 percent my fault okay yeah and yeah. you're and you're willing to share them with us yes. today okay yeah i've been sharing them with everybody i, th really? and I think does she care about that um, not really. My I, wife wants to divorce me. Like she literally, when I'm going to do a podcast, goes, "What is it going to be about?" That's fair. If if she in any way comes off looking bad, in my yeah. case, my wife doesn't come off looking bad Just either. You do, right? Yeah. Okay. So, she so was, she's not going to. I don't think. Maybe if I depict something she said or did it, inaccurately, she might. But she, my wife has never really cared too much about that stuff. So tell us about um or me. Tell us. I'm kidding. <laughs> tell me <laughs> about what those things were. Basically, I became such an, an unbearable narcissist and with such a huge ego that I completely disregarded almost everybody in my life. And, you know, listeners right now, I'm like, yeah, I can see that. You keep bringing the conversation back to you on a show that's supposed to be about the host. Uh, but. I have worked really, really hard on that in a short amount of time. and But basically, she said to me, she's like, I just don't even want to do this anymore. I'm not even sure I like you, much less love you, right. basically. Right. And I was just, and there were a lot of other complaints, but I don't want to bore people with that, honestly, I tell you. But but it it became really bad, and not only with my wife, but with my coworkers, with everybody, with you, with my friends, and basically the bottom line was, because you're losing interest. No, I'm not. I was impulsive. Just wondering what's better for the cameraman if I'm uh, if I'm like this. Which is a like weird. My back like, is to you. Bearing my is soul. It, is this better? Bearing my I, I, fucking I want to make soul, sure they get and it. And you're wondering <laughs> what angle is best for the camera. <laughs> and therein lies your problem. How, how how would you like it, cameraman? Would you like me like he this? He has a name too. <laughs> or this. What about um girl in back? There's a girl over there. That's I don't true. know. She's not operating a device. So, girl in back, what do you think? Girl with pad and pen. So disrespectful. You do that to wait waitresses. He doesn't mean it. And and but I don't know that. What's your name, sir? Drew, Drew, Drew Matt, and Drew Matt, and, and I was introduced to her, Brittany. Brittany, I know okay. Brittany. So, all right, I'm going to put this back down. I apologize, Pete, because you you were burying your soul. I've got and, this. I've got this down, this so I can get great. back to it. Now, here's my problem. Okay. So you were being a narcissist. Yeah. I actually noticed it as your friend, believe it or not. Yeah, no doubt. You would told me. Had I told you? Yeah, in, in in different ways. Maybe not quite that way. Mm -hmm. But you told me with your with your actions, with your friendship, with your you know. Oh, you could tell. Oh yeah, because yeah. I like, used Pete's to, hard to be around. I would say that to critical. my wife. I was like, uh, I noticed it lightened up though before you started. Therapy. I got better specifically with you. You did. Yeah, okay. I made you, just, an effort. you weren't better. With, you I noticed think, you were doing it to me. Yeah. I, well, you told me. Yeah, basically. But I made an effort to not be like the last time we all came together as a family, especially. I made an effort to really like focus on you know and be complimentary to you. And then I went not overboard because it's totally genuine what I think about uh, fixing Joe the official comedy web series. I didn't go overboard, and I just made sure that I told you how much I love something because I'd certainly spent plenty of time in our friendship telling you what I didn't like that you were doing. So I, I made really sure to tell you in, in the most sincere and honest way 
uh, how much I admired your web series now fucking hilarious and honest and well written right. produced directed and edited it was well, it's funny because I'm thinking of one word that you use that I go Pete's being preachy now and there's a word if you just stayed away from it what is it you'd be less preachy that's awesome because that was something you were doing is what you, word you're is getting it? a little pre- I was like I feel like I'm on your radio show all the time I'm like dude this, we're not doing political uh, debating right now I just I came over to have a beer and watch your you watch the Jets. Watch me watch the Jets? Yeah, because I don't care about the Jets. But I remember being at your house. I can watch a football game. We were watching football, and you're like trying, and you're yelling at me that I don't know about the foreign policy or something like that. I'm like, dude, the I, foreign policy. I don't follow. I can imagine. I can't, I can't imagine why I was yelling at you for not knowing about the foreign policy. <laughs> I don't know anything. Is apparently, about, a thing. I'm terrible with politics. It's just something right. I, 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 I could. What sound is the stupid. one word that you? Okay, here's the word. Yeah. You're gonna laugh when I say it. Okay. It's the word skill set. You're like, I mean, I have this. It's not in my skill set. My skill set is to whenever you use skill set, it goes to some sort of uh, bad place. First, <laughs> you for use the that I'm word a lot. To? It's yeah. usually, huh? I thought okay. You're talking I about do use my, his skill set. You you tell me what my skill set is. It's more of a phrase than a word. <laughs> you use it a lot, yeah. and it's usually when you're trying to tell me how I should do something. Oh wow! Yeah. I can see me using that with you, right? Like your skill, like your skill sets are limited. <laughs> Mine are far reaching. Say, I bet you use it to your wife when she was like, "Listen, if you don't go into therapy, oh, God, there's so many things I use." I mean, they basically stopped valuing mm-hmm. her opinion, her thoughts, her interests, her passions, her future, her career. Everything was about me. I'm sure a lot of mm-hmm. guys who are like the, the 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 main sole source of income, um, plus the their alpha males. A lot of the kind of combination well, of skill sets. Well, I, uh, I, I, but I, I have that mentality. But you can't. That's not okay. It doesn't mean it's okay. Right. You know. Maybe well, I, I have jokes about how you can get a lot a, a, away with a lot more if you are the sole provider. Yeah, but that's a it's, it's a. Not okay. It's not okay to get away but with. Something. You watch guys that are the sole providers, and the wife is the stay-at-home mom. Yeah. Get away with it. Well, it's like this. I mean, this is. But it's got to be in the three hundred thousand and up range. If and- you're at between <laughs> sixty grand and uh, and and what did I say three hundred and yeah. and two ninety nine. Your wife's going to punch you right in the face. <laughs> well, the, it was the kind of thing where – this is who I'm talking about. You come home from work. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is more relatable probably for most people. The man or you know, in some cases the women uh, come home, comes home from work after a long day. And let's say he has an interesting, important, stressful job. And his wife says, how was your day? And he says 50 different things that happened if he's open. Uh, and then he either doesn't say, how was your day, or when he asks, he doesn't actually care or listen uh, because her day can't be as important, interesting, or stressful as his, as yours was. And so I did that in almost every conversation. Mm-hmm. And I do a lot of that too. And it, it, it became – I think that's a comedian way. I feel like – Certainly a character that comedians have, but I, I – you know – I think I forgot about what I loved about my wife. I forgot to cherish and honor her. I forgot to court her. Somebody recently told me you should never stop dating your 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 spouse, your significant other. Mm-hmm. And I stopped courting her. I stopped trying. I mean, I always try to impress her and show off my wife. It's always been a, a hilarious thing. But I just stopped putting light in, on her, showing her respect, asking her about her, spending time on her. And since I started therapy again, I have been like, so many different things I'm doing, but every day, you know, because I get up at three thirty in the morning for my radio show, which is on Sirius XM six and nine every morning, channel one hundred four. I will send an email to her that will op- it'll be first thing she sees in a day, and or I'll do something. I'll leave a note, a flower, something that shows I'm thinking about you right now as I'm preparing for my radio show. And that's just one thing I've done. The more important thing is the more important a problem I had was reactions and reacting, and you know that as well as anybody. I mean, you have a temper, and I have a temper. But you actually, your temper doesn't manifest itself. Your anger doesn't manifest itself as often as mine does. It's intense. Your anger, your temper is bad. Yeah, but it's not always there. But it's not saying. about every fucking thing. Right. It's it's just. Do you agree saying, with me? Yeah. yeah, yeah in yeah. terms of the difference between you well, and I, I'm on the medic. Selexa has uh, has made it a very rare occurrence. Yeah. Same with me. For I got a little mad this Saturday on stage. I hadn't felt it. In three years since being on the medication, mm. there was a drunk woman doing shots with a guy two rows back, 
and I'm in the middle. You know, you you know my act. So the joke is, oh. <laughs> everybody knows it. They've all seen Dan. Cook. You know the joke where I. <laughs> no, I like Dan. Cook. I don't know right, why right. I picked him. You know, should picked someone I didn't like. You know the joke where I talk about um, my married. My wife's a psychologist. She told me I had ADD on our first date. And then I end up at the ADD office taking the ADD test. I don't think so. Yeah, you do. I don't think I do. I don't know why. You know it. Oh, yeah, you're taking a test. Okay. Take the ADD test. Best yeah. I ever did on a test. First question, when you read, do you get tired? I go, when I read, I feel like I got shot by a blow dart. <laughs> when you go to the movies, do you fidget in your seat? I go, when I go to the movies, I look like Ray Charles when he's coming off the of ah! Right. So there's a point in the joke where I go. This, That's racist. This joke was so support. This joke or this uh, test felt so specific to me that it felt like the doctor was going, hey, do you drive a silver Subaru for us? <laughs> you know, so it's, yeah. then I make yes. it get really specific. Yes, yes, yes. So I, this a woman. Great joke. This, I am such a fan so of stand up comedy. This lady does a shot and then goes, excuse me, in the middle of the joke. So you, imagine how. Isn't that, that's very annoying when someone does that. Excuse it's, me, I have a question. It's not, it's Your not, joke's not done. It's, it's got four more parts. You're right in the fucking fifty percent. It's not as much annoying as it is, like a so drunk un- lady too. inappropriate and unorthodox. It's not a conversation unless yeah. you invite someone in the audience yes. in. They don't. You don't get to raise your hand and join in. So she goes, "Excuse me, do right. you have trouble sleeping?" I just want to know if you have trouble sleeping. And, like, her boyfriend is putting his head down. Oh, God. He's just so embarrassed. He's going, Shh, stop, stop. He's hitting her. Stop, stop, stop. Yeah, yeah. And she proceeds. And I go, you realize you're interrupting a joke about ADD. That's to good. fucking, you're inter- you're, you're, And so you get a laugh on that, yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, You're, you're okay. interrupting And then what ADD. happened? And she's just going, I just, I need it. And then she got mad that I was addressing her. And I go, I looked at the audience and I go, I can't stand when a crowd, um, what's the point I'm trying to get at? Oh, no, no, not the crowd. How the person who interrupted gets mad if you try to make what she did funny somehow. Yeah. Acknowledge what she did. Sure. She's like, oh, you're just not that funny anyway. She went right to that really fast. So if you're not that funny, so uh, I'm trying, I was like, why are you making this? You interrupted me. I acknowledge your interruption. While I was Making being funny, funny, getting laughs. Yeah, and she goes, you're not funny. And I go, let's take a poll. Who thinks I'm probably one of the funniest comedians they've ever seen? Something like that. They all applaud. I go, who thinks she's funny? And they're glad she interrupted. And, Boo. Right, no, right. Nobody. Where go, was it? I go, it, it was at, a, it was at this, <laughs> this Coyote Maverick in Danbury, Connecticut. It's like a... It's but like it was a, a line, comedy show. Comedy club. Yeah, okay. They made it a comedy show. Okay. Nice, All right. Nice Who books place. it? I passed on that. You passed on that, I remember. And that's why I got the gig. So, no. Uh, so, yeah, so she, you know, gets gets upset with me. And I think the funny, one of the funny lines I said to her, I go, you're not hot enough to be that ah. stupid. You're, <laughs> but Which was funny because she was smoking hot. Of course. Smoking hot women love to interrupt. Yeah, yeah. And they they have and trouble they can, listening. Get, I don't know they, why they get away with it. They don't like someone else shows. getting the attention. I love that situation. I go. I don't care that you're hot. I'm married, yeah. so I'm going to go right to your shitty, untalented personality. And the only reason yes. you're even here or anywhere is because of that face, which is something. Right. But what behind what's behind? I don't it want them stinks. to know that they're pretty. I want I don't I want they them to doubt know. it. I want they, them to well, doubt it when right. they leave. One, so what happened? You so, got angry. So I got. I We're go talking you, about your anger. So I now. started to get angry, and I go, "Do you know how much of a douche you have to be to make me angry when I'm on this much Celexa?" Oh, that's good. I go, "You got to be so out of line." For me to get angry, I go. I haven't been out. Of, I haven't got angry in three years. Oh, my anger's awesome. been in a headlock. That's great. And you revived. My anger's it. in a headlock is a great line. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that was basically it. So it rarely so never happens. Really, but you didn't lose them. No, no, no. I did. Yeah, I, I had a great. I can't imagine. I've seen you go crazy. No, and I lose people. I don't lose I it anymore. It's uncomfortable, and I have to leave. I don't lose it anymore. It stays happy. I don't get that. I want to fight you now. I saw you, you snap on an audience, and I said to the audience, "I was like, let's go, everybody." And we left together <laughs> in a in a bus. No, but I'm saying you, but that was, you, if that was you're pre- getting angry all the time, yeah, that yeah. sometimes you would never take medication because you're Mister Holistic or something like that. But no, I mean, I smoke, can, mar- I smoke marijuana, but not that. That's not why. But it's definitely a med- it's definitely a medication. Did you smoke marijuana before you were married and had kids? No. Okay, so you think the there's been anxiety from the load. 
the workload versus the family load. It's it's a big load. No, 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 no. No, I mean, so I'm, when did the marijuana start? Um, I don't remember. Um, I don't know, like ten years ago, maybe. And when do you use it? When you start? To, is there a I'm is there a time of day? Okay. I'm afraid my parents are gonna hear it. Oh, your mom and dad listen? No. <laughs> I talked about it. the only time I ever talked about it on air is here. Really? They know they won't find it. And I want to be honest with you. It's not. I okay. Just, I just don't need to deal with that. All right. I would have loved to have known, like, if there's like a you time gonna ask of the day question you know? anyway, then. No, because like I caught. What would you love to know? No, no, no. This is interesting because you sometimes use marijuana now that you're married with kids. I drink now that I'm married with kids, and my wife does not like it because I was a non-drinker, like no drinks when we were dating. You don't drink heavy. No, I've never seen you drunk in my life. I'm trying to write a bit about how my wife gets mad at me for things that I think almost all guys do. Yeah, like that's she, fair. She's literally like, Masturbate. "Did you just have a din- did you just have, have a beer at hookers. dinner and then drink another beer while watching the hockey game?" I'm like, "Yeah, uh, yeah well, she's wrong. Like, I rarely disagree with your wife. Two beers, she's she'll be wrong, like, "Well, yeah. you're having two beers and you had a beer yesterday." Did you think she you worried- had one beer yesterday? Do you- you're having two today. Do you think she Jesus. worries about how, like, just the um, the health thing? Is it an addiction thing? Advice? Well, like, her, her does she mom, think you're going to get her flabby? Mom, her mom, all that beer. No, you're starting- I don't no. think it's flabby. As I, think- I saw you with your shirt off earlier, and flabola. No. Her mom seems to think it's because you know, her father is a sober guy. Sure, sure. That's why I stayed away from everything. Cause my brother didn't yeah. touch drugs or alcohol for. That's why not until I was in my early twenties, not one drop of alcohol. And I was a jock. I was the guy who fits the category of a kid who would drink, whatever. Never touched it. And it over somehow. Uh, I just get sh- over my you, you get, my my stressed. paranoia to it. No, no, because it doesn't have to be something. It can be recreational and not medication. You know, that's uh, how I feel. Like I look for. This is going to be weird, but like sometimes I'm doing the when I'm doing the dishes or I'm making dinner for the whole family or cleaning the whole family's dishes. That's when I like to have a glass of wine or one beer. Same too when my wife goes to bed, which is at nine fifteen. And sometimes if there's a game on that I'm looking forward to, a football game, baseball game. Last night the the New York Rangers played the Flyers. Yeah, and I um. I beer? stayed up. The, I didn't have the beer. I wanted to, though. I ended up. What the, beer do you drink? You know why? I have lots of different ones. Uh, I think it's always an interesting question. What beer do I drink? Yeah, yeah. What beer is Right you now, like, I had this Blue Moon version, like a uh, amber Blue Moon. It wasn't yeah. the typical Blue Moon. I like the Blue the Moon. Valencia. I like the Blue Moon, and I like a lot of trash beers. Like, just awful, like. Cheap s- beer? Summer white person beer. <laughs> like one of those, like. Orange, shl- orange? No, no, What's no, no, no. I mean, like orange, shitty, shady. plain. What's that one called? American Budweiser, yeah. Rolling Rock. I can't drink that. I buy Pabst every once in a while. I can't drink cheap beer. Uh, I like good. And beer. I drink Bud Light, Miller Light, and do you ever? Do you ever? Just now during our the podcast, I have this horribly gross habit. I'll pick between my teeth uh-huh. and then smell it. I do uh, the same thing with dental floss. Right while and we're it talking, it smells so. <laughs> Bad, like smoker breath bad. I don't smoke, so it's weird and really bad. Uh, and I just did it. Yeah, while we were talking, I smelled it. You did and the it smell. It was terrible, <laughs> and I like it. Like I'm, ever, I, I, I'm I used like to masochistic. Have a, I used to have a friend growing up to go. Oh my god, is it? That smells like grape jelly. Does, does that smell like I'll do grape jelly? I'll... And he gets you to smell it by telling you it smells oh, like God, grape jelly. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like, awful. You're like, I would throw up. I would <laughs> never do that to somebody else. Rich Boss oh. does it a lot. He has a spot that he digs in oh, on his really? nose right there, and I'll go. Really? Oh, that smells really good. No. And then God. He'll, he'll try to get people on. That you're is... like, dude, why that... would your nose crease smell really good? <laughs> I thought what I was doing was like the worst. I never thought of sharing it with another. Oh, yeah, it's yeah, great. Anyone. Those those elk of comedians love to get you to walk in. Elk or ilk? Whatever. Are they I elk? Said elk. Though? No, are they, are they said, a herd of <laughs> large deer that mainly roam in the plains I, I in Colorado? Say, or I, the, is it the ilk? I, of, I, I did the say elk. elk. Maybe, they, maybe the, the comedians refer to travel in herds and our. Uh, I feel high right now. Herbivores. All right. So what let's, elk of comedy do you like? <laughs> What elk? <laughs> what elk of comedy are you? Uh, of all the all elks, right, stop it. Let's get to the next. Let's get to the, to to the next thing. So, which is deer and which moose. is deer and comedy. No, so uh, yeah, so so yeah, that could be why my wife doesn't 
doesn't like it because because of, of her father. I think she's a little touchy yeah, on that well, subject. That, that doesn't make it. Okay. That's not fair. I rarely uh, disagree with Steph, and I'd like well, to hear her side. I want to say to her, you. This is a good point. This should be what see, I say. I can on see stage. her wait, 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 not liking this, me. but I can see her not liking us talk about this. Yeah, she. Oh, so you're trashing oh, your oh. wife right now in a way. You're, you're no, you're not trashing her. You're giving your side, and and I'm Stephanie is really her, no, you're not. But Stephanie, I could see being like, that's not at all what happened. And then I'd be like, oh wait, that's, that's true. She'll go. Yeah. you just told that completely out exactly. of what really happened, and that's why it's not fair, and that's what annoys her and and anybody. But you that, know what? To to be fair, I think that is exactly what she said. That's fine, but <laughs> you, you had do agree one that, beer, and then you're having another beer. If I have an argument. With you, or and I, and I go and tell my wife about our argument. I'm gonna give it my biased version and my side, and I'll try to be diplomatic. I'm like, well, to be, to, you know, to be fair to Joey, did say this, and I was that, but I still want to make myself look good. If I don't, I'm probably not telling other people. Meaning, when two people have a disagreement or argument or difference, and you only get one side, you're far more likely to probably agree with that because you're not getting all the information. That's what happens, I think, a lot with you and your wife. In these podcasts, or uh, yeah, or any ha- radio show, you're not being disrespectful. This you're doesn't happen in your you relationship. Just... You bring up something that happened at the yes. dinner table, and then she's like, "That isn't what I said." Yeah, though. but I don't usually make these those things too public. But that's the, what you do. I mean, that's part of yeah. this podcast. I'm used to repairing my relationship. She knows that. <laughs> she knows that. So the funny, the funny joke to me would be, well, you you get a little touchy because your dad is in recovery, but I can drink and get away with it. Because m- no one in my whole family has ever had an alcohol problem. Like I, d- I'm not, I don't have it in my genes. Yeah. No one in my ilk. <laughs> no one in your entire elk, in your herd. <laughs> yeah, I mean, my dad was yeah. always the guy that would drink six beers at a barbecue, get in the car, drive us home, no problem. That doesn't sound like a. But, that actually sounds like the definition of a problem. Right, that's true. That sounds like a cocky drunk to me. No. Like, I just had six beers. No, he just, Where are my three children I'm kidding. and you, wife? I've never seen my father drunk. Yeah, uh, that's funny. I never saw my dad drunk, and, I, and, and he quit when my brother quit. Right. When my brother went to rehab, my dad quit. And I've seen my mom a little buzz, and that's mm-hmm. like two glasses of wine. Like, she, oh, mom's being silly. Does your mom get more ignorant or less ignorant? No, I'm way more fun. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. She'll I wish she like, was. Oh, old. there's a black person. They can play on my team. Oh, yeah, I wish she. Did she, your mom agree with racism. Donald Sterling? <laughs> what the Lakers <laughs> owner? Does your mom like? Hey, he's got a point. Oh, she'll probably. Say, I could see her saying. Oh that. god. No, back in her day, your mom's the kind of person. Like, listen, can this we is, edit this out, please? This Jesus is the Christ. way things are. This is on video. I can't change them. All right. That's what he said. He said, this is the way things are. I can't change them. And then I'm like, really? Have you ever heard of an abolitionist? Like someone who, like, even in the 1800s, like a white person who fought against slavery? You can actually change it. It, it, it just takes one person, Joe. Yes. Especially if, if, by the way, if you're super wealthy, you could probably have an even bigger impact on changing things. Or you could just let minorities rent from you, which is apparently something he wasn't doing. This became my radio show. Yeah, how did this turn into, uh, what's your show called? Stand Up with Pete Dominic. Stand Up with Pete Dominic. People loved when so, you were on it. You see the teleprompter? Yeah. It says that the, we, we we need to tell them about how the uh, Fixing Joe, the web series, kind of evolved out of Fixing Joe, the podcast, mm-hmm. which is 169 episodes in. This is the 169th episode. Uh, you don't need me for this, do you? You, know, you can talk to me as I explain. I just wanted to uh, explain how uh, how this happened, how it turned into a web series. Now, Andres, who you really adore, you think he's an amazing talent, who yeah. shot the web series. It's Great been... cin- cinematography, directing, and editing skills. Yes. And now, he's cre- clearly a very creative guy with a lot of ideas. Well, he's been a good friend of mine for over 20 years. Yep. Um, met Say, him through an ex-girlfriend. He, has, he was um, good friends with my ex-girlfriend. Syphilis, right, Andres? <laughs> Stop it. I thought he... We don't go for the joke here on Fixing Joe. This I'm not, very I'm not making a joke. I thought Andres told everybody that he had something. <laughs> no, I thought he did a whole it. thing about it. He didn't? <laughs> no. People don't know? I'm sorry. I'm not trying to be funny. I go thought people know. Oh. <laughs> so, Syphilis. It's such a funny only word. Only because there's three people here are you going for the laugh. Uh, could true. you imagine if, no, there, I were, don't. if I don't. there were ten? No, because I do radio every day with no people. I don't have an audience. I know, but I'm saying you got to know that people, people are sitting listening. in the room. That's I'm making sure you do uh, trying to joke it up. I'm sure there's three people listening to the podcast somewhere too. <laughs> and two of those, based on percentages and statistics, have syphilis. 
So uh, two of every three Fixing Joe podcast listeners are syphilitic. <laughs> is that a word? So <laughs> they travel in, in elks. So let me explain this. So uh, the podcast happened. Uh, uh, Bed Rocket and Official Comedy. Uh, Andres was shooting some things for one of their other web series, and they said, "You know, our network is trying to do things more connected to one person. Do you have anything more about you?" I looked at my manager, and I can read his mind when I'm looking at him. And then I decided to pitch them this Fixing Joe idea that I always wanted to do as a sitcom and as a web series. They, you could have started they this story it. there, probably. probably. Like I think this is boring. And I okay. rarely am bored by you. And I love listening to your podcast. But isn't this something that you struggle you with think... and put you in therapy, what you're doing? Is my skill set not to... Uh... Except, yeah, <laughs> it, it, except for when I'm on air. Like, I've got to be interesting on air. Okay. And I felt like that... Well, they're, they can edit. And well, so they can should I. edit the hell out of that. I can edit. They should edit out any of the times when you were talking and keep in the parts where I was talking. So basically, uh, you, the, the the web series is about a guy who has anger, went to therapy, has a psychologist wife, uh, and is trying to be a better dad, a better professional in his comedy career, a better uh, person, would you say? And yeah. uh, and on all those kind of issues. And I was just curious because you tell me you love the podcast. What do you? The web series. The web series. I mean, I like you the love podcast the podcast too, and you love the web series. Yeah, yeah. And what? Do you really connect with? I just think that when any when anybody takes from their own life the way that you always have with your stand up career, like I've always loved you your brand of stand up, which is um, to minimize it the most in one word, autobiographical. So I've always loved comedians who are autobiographical. Uh, Louis C.K., Pete Corielli. I mean, guys who talk about You're that. Jim Norton. I'm and I'm that because I like what you do. Mm-hmm. I think that's. But we used to not be. You probably. Were. I'm more... at the beginning. You're not. I wasn't. I was uh, very observational when so, I started. And but I mean, I'm, I'm thinking of going back to that. Believe it or not. I love. Me, can I stay on this podcast? Why go I like ahead. the web series? So I love your stand up, and this is kind of an outgrowth of your stand up. Uh, in in that there, you can see the material, not the jokes, the way they would be in stand up, but you can see the issues that you talk about in in the web series. I and I also just think it's really, really well written, directed, and produced. It really moves along, and there's never a moment like earlier in the conversation when you were talking about how it developed that I was bored in the web series. And that's obviously the difference between doing something live and doing something scripted, but. Because you can take out any moment that you don't like or argue well, and about, you, and you write it in a concise way. Yeah, yeah, and and we're this is a conversation, a podcast. But so I just I lo- I love the creativity too that you take with like the editing and and production value. I think the cast is fantastic, but it, it, for me, there's just it's such as just as your stand up is, and very similar to Louis C.K., who I think is fantastic. It's so vulnerable, and men in general aren't vulnerable. Comedians are obviously more vulnerable because they have to be to be successful on stage and to be relatable. But it's so vulnerable. And do you, you think, think that? On, though? Do you yeah. think comedians have to be? No, because my wife. No, but but has, you do, and I. Do. I do, and you. Yeah, why? Why do I have to be vulnerable to be funny? You think because I could you be know, funny if I didn't show vulnerability? Absolutely. Yeah, your your joke. Your, I'm trying to think of a joke that you do that isn't so autobiographical and is more of a um, observational. Tell me one. I guarantee that it's funny. I don't you used to do a joke about having a threesome. That wasn't vulnerable. It was actually bragging. But that actually happened, and it was very right. There was nothing wrong. I mean, it's not observational. No, but it wasn't vulnerable. That joke, if, if no one knows the joke we're talking about, but I think there was vulnerability. Maybe it in that was joke at the end because yeah. there's parts of me going, you know, I didn't even know what to do afterwards, or you know, the awkwardness but, in the it. The point that, is that, that you, they were into each other more than me. That's vulnerable. Th- that's true. I'm trying. I can't think of one, but I know there are plenty. I'm sure there's you know, not a lot. More. There's not a lot. Fine. <laughs> fine. I'll take an observation. And I, somehow I, I make like even the quiet please umpire that I used to make fun of in tent, yeah. tennis. I couldn't do that joke without saying I want him in my living room. And you never pronounce the H in the word with, but we won't get stuck on that. <laughs> uh, but I no. I th- yes. You yes. You're always funny. Observing and criticizing others, uh, and, and just things in life, mm-hmm. animals, whatever. I mean, yeah, no, you're a funny guy all around. But your vulnerability comes out in the web series. 
all your insecurities. You talk like you talk about the medication that you take, and you really do in real life. It's not you're playing a character. It's really about you and your life. You talk about that at the end of it. You ask people for advice, which is another. Mm-hmm. And I think that watching other people's failures and weaknesses is inherently extremely entertaining, especially when you can relate to them or have sympathy for them. I don't feel that way about reality shows where we get off and watching people fail and getting voted off. I don't like that. And I think it's not good for society. I do think when real life is exposed on camera the way you do it in Fixing Joe – it's really healthy in many ways for the viewer, uh, and it's very relatable. And I think that most of the stuff is very real. Some of it obviously is, is exaggerated, of course, in the web series, which is what makes it, some of it really, really funny. But so often, like when you're so insecure about a guy hitting on your wife or uh, when you expose your OCD to your, your barber, like that, sh- that scene, for example, that you, and you said it actually happened mm-hmm. and you didn't exaggerate it, to me, was one of the funniest things I've ever seen on camera. Well, I'm glad you say that because I went to my barber yesterday. I got a haircut, as you can tell on camera. This is a fresh haircut I got yeah. for this web series. Go ahead, talking to a bald episode. guy. Yeah. <laughs> Easy now. Careful. Well, I shot that scene in my barbershop's office. In, mm-hmm. in, not office, in his. Barbershop. I almost said salon. Did they even call them a salon? His, His barbershop's office. Oh, yeah. My barbershop. He's got an office back behind <laughs> he actually salon, does. He behind does his have chair one back there. where he does deals. Well, he's, what does he do? In he, the, what does a barber do in well, the he, office? He, he has the cleanest. Balance bar- the books. All right, let me get here. Right, he has like the cleanest or barbershop. New shears. So he, he might be a little OCD because he's very clean with his barbershop. Very proud of it. He couldn't wait to see the episode that had his barbershop in it. The episode isn't necessarily about him. He was never the guy that kicked me out mid haircut. That was a different, was a different guy. Yeah, it was a mall haircut place. No, it no was a office. place. That, that joke. Well, that story really evolved, and, and how it really went down is I when I first moved to L.A. and when you first move somewhere, you got to find a new. You got to find a new place, and that's I a scary feeling. I don't have you that don't, feeling. You just buzz it yourself. Buzz it. Who buzzes that? Buzz. Who, you think this who is clips a buzz? it? Dude, this is a straight razor on my skull. You use straight, like you just use like Look what at you do. A Mach three. I, I don't I'm, actually use the head blade. Really, you yeah. go to zero. Zero. All right. And I did it yesterday, so it's pretty fresh. All I right. usually miss spots though, oh, which okay. is really embarrassing. That's why people go to the. I never see other ball guys that shave their heads. The barber with office <laughs> spots. I need to go to a barber office to get it done. <laughs> so. Uh, he saw the episode, the, and he he knew it was about a different barber and everything. People have to see this scene. Yeah. If they haven't seen it, they've got to watch it. But it's the, it's the Requiem is, for a K Cup is the episode. Is that, yeah, I don't know that the and number. that and that, what's interesting too is that you're able to have you know more about this than I do, but like subplots within within a seven or eight minute show. That's hard to do, I would imagine. Like you've got the the hair. Salon scene, the barbershop Celine, C- Celine Dion is in this one. A lot of people don't know that Celine Dion made a cameo. Uh, the barbershop scene, and then you've got the, the beginning of it buying the K-Cup maker. It's all about your OCD. That gets exa- that gets really worse from drinking yeah, a lot of coffee. Right. And, it's, it's, and, and again, that's why I think that's my favorite episode because it's very funny. I mean, they're all hilarious, but the, the drink. Everybody can relate to some vice, and most people can relate to drinking coffee. Yeah, and what it does. I'm glad. I, I'm God, trying. I wish I, was, I had a cup I, right I, now. I was trying to get at why I'm glad you said that. As I went to get the haircut yesterday, and he brings up seeing the episode, and then I noticed that look in his eye had that look where oh shit, he's gonna he's gonna be honest. Here it goes. Like he was like oh, good, good. You know, he's foreign, he's Russian. And uh, and Middle Eastern, he's like a very weird mixture Middle of people. Eastern, Middle Russian Eastern guy. Russian guy. It's very With an odd. office. <laughs> With an office. You know what's going on in there. <laughs> so he goes, I must say, I, I have to say, uh, Joe, uh, I think the that scene was funnier when I was watching you film it than it came across in the uh, episode. Well, That's what he shit. said. He goes, it was, it, it was, it went yeah, too so fast. Is, so is almost everything. He if thought we, it went I like fast. To, I like to break down the hierarchy of comedy, and and one thing that is almost always funny is the thing that you're witnessing in real time, yeah. like the thing that you're part of. You're watching. Like the, we're it's we're true. taping this year this podcast here at. Uh, at the at these studios and the people in the room will enjoy some of the nuance of this even more than the listeners and so will the people watching it maybe because they see it and 
You know, right. but I mean, if you're in, yeah, I mean, uh, so that's I shouldn't no care that he said. No, not at all. He thought it went a Plus, little too fast. Plus, he's a fucking Middle Eastern, <laughs> Russian, Ukrainian guy. barber, and if that's if that's who you're trying I to please, I can't wait to show him this clip. Then fine. Now, oh, fuck you, motherfucker. <laughs> How dare you guy say that shit? Fucking nails my haircut every time. Man, he's probably gonna fucking nail me with some kind of uh, he's, scam. He's a good guy. Russian car. He, he's a good guy. His thief. Name, his name's Albert. I'm sure. We'll give Albert great. a plug right yeah. now. Albert's barber yeah, shop. Sure on Mill a lot of really, Street. There's a lot of really good Byron, Russians. New York. There's a lot of really good Russians and Middle Easterners out there. Yeah. Two twenty two Mill less, Street. A guy who's both. All right. What are the so, uh, what are those two groups? So something I wanted to ask you with because I talked about things that I struggle with. That's what the series is about. As as a man, as a mm. professional, as a husband. As a dad, what are some of the things that you would be comfortable sharing with my audience? About me? About you that you struggle with. Uh, like if you were going to do Fixing Pete, uh, what would be an episode? Like you just talked about. Uh, mo- uh, uh, my inability to commit to certain healthy behavior, my uh, both mentally and physically i think I you used to be an insane workout guy your personal, personal trainer. trainer for a living and that it, meant i worked at a gym and that meant i had to work out you and were I, super in shape do you yeah. think that made you more mentally fit um no because i was so immature at that point in my life i can't even imagine do you ever think about become like do you work out at all now yeah 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 that's kind of dicky I'm asking you. Yes. Okay. You're looking at me. You ask and then you look down but, at me. Like I mean, my chest, like my chest behind this shirt was going to tell the difference. I didn't think. Can you think you can tell somebody who's who's not overweight <laughs> that they're in shape? That they, that people think I'm in good shape because you're in, I'm not overweight. You're I'm in, in terrible. You're shape. in very good shape, but compared to what you were, where you were all muscle. I can still do 40 push-ups, 10 pull-ups, and run uh, three, four miles. How right often now. do you exercise? One way or another, a couple times a week at least. Okay, but not a lot and not vigorously. I'm like I've been taking walks now because I have a dog. I walk with my dog and I think, and that's you know good because it's not. Could you run I, with your? dog? I could. I could ride my bike with my dog. <laughs> could you walk fast with your dog? You're not allowed to go on the path at the park. Do you have food in your hand really when you're dog. walking with your dog? No, but sometimes when I'm walking my dog, I put my finger in my tooth and smell. And you smell my it? finger, right. and then who I make does the dog it? make the dog doesn't? smell, and the dog licks it off. Did you know my dog? And I'm doing this with my act. I'm sorry, but you know, I met my while I was having sex with my wife. My dog jumped on the bed and started licking my asshole. Gave me a rim job, oh, and it was stop. awesome. Please, stop. did you know that that that, that really happened? That really happened. Yes. Get out of here. She always when you take Come off on. your when you when you take off your your uh, pants, whether it's me, my wife, or my daughters. I know it's really gross to say because uh, I'm talking about my daughters, but any my dog loves uh, poop and pee, so that's she she loves shit, and so she buried her face in my asshole and she sniffs and and oh. and chews and licks uh, underwear. Dirty underwear. If it's clean, just no she interest. She licked your in ass. It. I gotta write that down. She licked your ass. Yes, while I was having sex. I have a whole bit about how long that. did she lick? Long, your ass? not long enough. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> Come on, not long enough, gang. That didn't gross you out. It did at first because it's, it's wrong what in every way, say? and then it stopped grossing me out immediately. Almost. My wife still doesn't know. I'm, I hope she doesn't watch us because it was behind us. <laughs> She's like, what is that noise? I'm like, it's paradise. So what do you struggle with as a father? Um, and you can answer that question without it being hurtful to your children. No, no, no I'm, I'm thinking because I, I spend a great deal of time invested in being a good father. Is there anything you go, I wish I was better at that? I struggle with handling, um, with disciplining them the right way, with respecting their feelings appropriately. And with uh, maybe even motivating them. And by what I mean is I think I try to do all those things, but I do them inappropriately. So I spend a lot of time reading, researching, and interviewing on my radio show uh, parenting experts and child psychologists to learn about how to be a better parent. So I have quite a bit of confidence about my parenting simply because I work very hard at it actively Mm -hmm. in learning you know, it, most parents, I think, unfortunately, think it's instinctual, and whatever their their parents did was fine, and they learn from them, or or they do the opposite and think that's fine. It's a lot of things about parenting that are really counterintuitive. So I learn a lot. So it, it is that's a a really hard question to answer specifically. In the five weeks you've been in therapy, yeah. that you just started back in, has parenting came up in those five weeks? Uh, yeah, a little bit, that a little has. bit. Okay, that my issue wasn't so much my relationship and my communication with my children as it was with everybody else and simply because the issue was narcissism and 
my kids feed my narcissism because they're the only two people that I genuinely want to know everything about what's happening in their life. Like I dying every day when my kids won't kids my, my kid gets mad when i ask him how his you day know why was. i don't want to i don't want to you know tell why? you i'll tell you exactly why, why. because because you, you can't ask a child how their day was they will not know what to say how did i know this learned it in the book you have to ask them specifically watch go home to luke and say if he had uh, gym today or if he had library no you know something that he did how was lunch today? What did you eat? I, he will not avoid that question. He doesn't want to tell you, not because he's embarrassed. He doesn't know the answer to how was your day. Well, Kids I, can't answer that. I don't that. stop at that. I go, uh, how, was, how was recess? Mm-hmm. Did you play with, you know, if there's a kid's name that he yeah. has, had a problem go? with in the past? Ah, because you're, you're asking about a problem. Ask him about something just did not important. Did you play? What did you play at yeah, gym specifically. today? Did you have a kickball game? I, I asked that. And? He just doesn't like to answer it. Because he's probably but, you know what but else? Why? But why? But why? I don't know exactly. That's what you have to figure out. You have to understand how a six, seven-year-old mm-hmm. kid's brain works, and that's so hard for people, especially your age. You're like sixty. Well, here, <laughs> very old father. You know what's another one? You're that much further than uh, from seven than I am. You so know what's another more. one? And I'm curious how you can help me with this. He says my nighttime stories aren't long enough. Oh, they're not long enough. Went, I know why. I, I go. How that? long would you like a story to be? He goes fifteen minutes. I know. I why. go. What am I, fucking Stephen King? How do I do a fifteen-minute story off the top of my head and have it have a beginning, middle, and end? Daddy, end? all of your stories are about you. No, and he he doesn't want him to have his name in him. He goes, "Don't say Luke. I can't have Luke." That's interesting. He doesn't want it's his really name in any of the stories. I would say, not knowing much more than what you just told me, that they're not long enough because he doesn't want to go to bed and he enjoys your stories. It's pretty pretty. A parent problem. Yeah, he hates going to bed. Yeah, that's why he doesn't. He's that's afraid why you're afraid story- too. You're he won't st- let me leave there. There. Does your kid that's, sleep without you in the room? Joe, you just discovered why your stories aren't long enough. As soon as your story ends, his fear visits him. Right. That's why your stories aren't long enough. So how do I handle that? It's interesting that that he would rather hear what I would imagine. Are this would make a great web series. Awful episode. stories. Shame the series is over. Awful stories, I would imagine. But he's like, I'll listen to anyone as long as I don't have to turn the lights off. The Even lights are off dad. when he says that. Even we tell this stories hack in my the dark. father. My son some nights sleeps with all his lights on in his bedroom. I'm sure that's yeah. common for a six year old, right? Uh, I don't think it. I don't think it is. I don't think it's healthy either. He makes me stand by the bathroom when he's yeah. going to the bathroom. He's afraid to go upstairs hmm. if no one's up there. Hmm. Your kids like that? Nope. No fear. Mm-mm. Not like that. Not those types of. Not those types of. It's kind odd. of more. I said it's odd. I go. My, your mom and dad are literally was, out. Your our, the, our door is right outside of his. When I was eight, I was afraid living, growing up in Syracuse, New York, of mm-hmm. tornadoes, earthquakes, and nuclear war. Three things that had never visited Syracuse. I had irrational fears. It's not uncommon for children, uh, but you have to understand where they come from. That's the whole thing about parenting is trying to understand your child's brain. Yeah, I do. I want to know. I'm it. sure you do, but you got. I mean, like that's something that does help if you have the right therapist if they know those things they're okay. the parents themselves so what do you struggle with as a professional like on your radio show or as a stand up comedian I'm trying to think of the most interesting or best one but I struggle with right now work life balance but I've really become pretty much an I'm getting close to being an expert at it uh, balancing work with life balancing my ambitions as with my career, which is always, as you know, and almost every comedian knows, you want a lot of things. Certain comedians work harder and have more ambition than others, uh, but it's about how you go about to pursuing them. And now uh, m- my priorities are equal now. I want to be as – I've always just wanted to be great and do a really good job and get work and get paid and support my family and do what I love uh, with my career now I want to do all those things as a husband and a parent. So I'm doing this whole work-life balance where I actually – my ambition – when you think about – if I said to you, Joe, what is your greatest ambition? What would your answer be? I've kind of hinted towards what I, why I'm yeah. asking already. But usually people will – a lot of times I think people will give you a career-oriented answer. Right. But if you're more – if you have really thought about it a lot, you might say I would really – you know, I'd like to, maybe some people are like I'd like to make a mark in the world. You know, I'd like to leave a legacy behind, whatever it might be. You know, I, I I'd like to not allow uh, my extra girlfriend to bring blacks to games. Whatever your ambition might be, you know, people have different ambitions. Uh, and mine, my ambition is also now is to be a really a really good father and a really good husband and a really good friend and someone I have three people that work directly for me that people that they like to come to work and work for and make sure that I'm not a dick 
to well, them. You basically did my my fixing Joe podcast intro. I mean, what you just said. He, I want to be a good husband. I want to be a yeah. I mean, but so that you, must be why you connect with it a little but bit. But I do. But the but there's a difference between because everybody wants to be. I, I, I want to believe that people want to be better in their right, personal right. life but and some, their relationships. But what we don't do is we don't prioritize our uh, work on those things. So you say, oh, how can I be a better father and a better husband? Well, yeah, therapy helps. Yeah, reading certain books helps. Yes, communication helps. But are you spending as much time? Are you being as innovative, at getting better at those personal qualities as you are on your career, right? You do tons of amazing things for your career. You work at least eight hours a day on your work, on your career. I mean, you are a comedian who takes his career very seriously, always have you get up, you do what any other dad would do, and you go to work. Maybe it's at home, but you're working all day on whatever project you're working on for your career. Are you spending that kind of time and and, and, and self-reflection on being a better father and husband? Most of us, I think, do, don't have that that mindset. That's not what you work on. That stuff just kind of comes, and as long as I say I want to be good at those things, I will be. No, you got to work on it. The same way you work on your career and send emails and write jokes and and edit your podcast, you got to work on your marriage and and your and your relationship with your kids. And for, for, for example, every morning now since I've been back to therapy, and this wasn't her idea, I came up with this. I get up way earlier than my wife. I Spend time thinking about my wife, 10 minutes every morning. I send an email, I leave a note, a flower, something that says, I spent time thinking about you and what's going on with you and what meant happen in your day and what our conversation was about. And that is work. It's actual work. So if I have an hour to prepare for my, two hours to prepare for my radio show and I spend at least 10 minutes on my wife or my kids, that is work time. It's time spent. It's a great idea. I like it. And uh, I think definitely my wife had fallen into a rut and why we were kind of disconnected in the past <laughs> what? past couple of weeks what? is I that I, 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 I wasn't doing that. I used to be a guy that always texted her and told her how I felt and that I missed her and things like that. A lot of that. That right there I used to be. So yeah. I wrote my wife after I'm back for therapy for four weeks and she finally was set, starting to be satisfied because I've a million times gotten better overnight. For a day or a week, right, right. But this time was different. She wasn't buying that because I'm great bullshit. I'm a great performer. I can make her believe anything. Mm -hmm. So after four weeks, she basically said, "I'm, I'm, I see how consistent you are. I, I can't help but notice the difference." And I wrote back to her and I go, "I'm back. That guy that you fell in love with is back." And I and I'll argue I'm better than I ever was because of these. I've made some very specific changes in therapy. Your skill set has grown tremendously. My skill set has really grown, and I travel in this elk of, of, of people <laughs> that are really making me feel better about them. I know. So, so I said I'm back, and I'm better than I was, and you're going to fall not only back in love with me, but in love with a new guy. I'm different now, and it's really been amazing, and we had like Wolf of Wall Street sex the other night in the hallway. Yeah, you told me about that. I was did very I? jealous. Oh, your joke, it was funny. What did you say? I don't remember. What did I say? You said, you said did Leonardo DiCaprio study you or something? Did he? <laughs> oh, yeah. Something. What was it? I go, I don't that's think really Leonardo funny. DiCaprio is ever going to be like, dude, I had yeah. Pete Dominic sex. Yeah, yeah. It's that's fucking that's unbelievable. That was good. A, a dog licked my ass in the middle of it. Nothing's impossible. <laughs> Nothing's impossible. Maybe Leo will. Well, we want to answer. You know what's great that we have the, the more fixed version? The quicker we wrap this up, seriously. Yeah, this I have, is the wrap up. Because I'm I, going right into my it. My wife has said she'll have sex with me. I if know. I we get we got to get you home to have sex. Yeah. Uh, I'm hoping to have some tonight. I saw a girl so horny right now. And for my wife, I saw. A woman on the subway whose ass was like my wife's ass, <laughs> and that really like I had a throbbing erection uh, on the subway. Uh, yeah, and I do now as well. So I'm just looking at you. I I feel the same way about my wife, and I, I don't. Think I feel a the lot same way about husbands. your wife too. I find your wife so attractive. Yeah, so you do know I. That. Is that is it weird for her to hear me say that? No, she get uncomfortable. She would laugh. She would. Yeah, it would, uh, nervously or awkwardly. I I just think she's she knows her. Your power. wife has a beautiful face and an amazing body, but it's definitely her personality and even her style. I love your wife's style. I think she has a terrible I, personality. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I actually hate it, but I married her anyway. Just you married her, her for her tits. I just married for her. Huge. Looks. Joe's wife. Huge. I mean, stop. Stop. 
Uh, great ass, though. I mean, probably. You told me when you first started dating her, her ass is shaped like a heart. I did not. And I was like, no way. And I saw her <laughs> ass. He's making like, this up, Oh, my Steph. God. Is He's that totally a heart? He's totally making this up, No, Steph. no. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not making that up. That's I what you said. I never said that. Onion? Uh, someone told me that she had a nice onion. The guy oh, who set me up with her, who's great. my cousin, it's fantastic. And we were, and she was grossed out. But by I just that when I told her, she's like, "What does onion oh, mean? Sorry. Onions well, smell. I, Onions are gross." But the, like, hopefully, I don't know. hopefully, she takes this as a compliment. But it's her personality. I think she's such a cool, smart, thoughtful, honest, um, uh, sensitive person. And yes. and I love you know being around her. And, and I wished I had more photos of her. <laughs> What? Let's let's get to the last portion weird? of the show, which is why uh, Official Comedy and Bed Rocket wanted us to do a visual version of my podcast, mm-hmm. which is they want us to answer some of the viewers. Uh, oh yeah, we got to answer comments and questions. questions. Yeah. So uh, one of the questions gonna, come from should somebody I go called over and get that Manak Manak Mem. Uh, very like. Uh, uh, oh, you saw that Jewish in the name. email? Yeah. yeah, I won't even and be able to pronounce. And you're things. anti-Semitic, right? Uh, <laughs> I can't be. You should see the guy who cuts my hair, the barber. He's very. Wears a yam? She doesn't wear a yam. Do you have any? Everyone in my neighborhood wears a yam. Didn't you see my oh, that's uh, right. my you live Mezuzah in a very... episode? Yo, that was awesome, too. That I mean, yeah. every episode is awesome. That was so... Uh, you cast <laughs> it's funny. You cast that series so well, too, uh, using a lot of comedians. That like guy Dante is a Nero really and... orthodox comedian who played that part. Who Dan says, Natterman. You need to put that back up. Not the, not the Dan Natterman part. Oh. The other but guy. But Dan Natterman is cast as like this kind of creepy guy, and, yeah, yeah. and in real life he is. <laughs> and, and Dante Nero is cast as this big, intimidating, moving guy. In real life he is. Yes. Uh, so, really, really well cast. And the woman so, who plays your wife, I also find extremely attractive. What's her deal? So that's Rebecca Cush. She's, is she on Facebook? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Look her up, everybody. Nice onion. She's great. And uh, she's married. She's married. Yes. Mm. She is uh, very talented. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Do you ever kiss her? And you kissed her like peck kisses. You never make out with her. We never made out. No. How did you not write that in? I don't know. You may uh, never give them an opportunity. I don't know. It would have been so. I once made out with a girl on a on a uh, with a girl or? with a girl. <laughs> It must, it, have been, it must have been really turned on when you dropped the H. Off I of did every... something for uh, the Howard Stern. She was like, "Do you are you going to do this without a condom?" Show in the hallway with uh, yeah. Sal Governale was like the writer and producer. Yeah, yeah. And I, I had to make out with this girl. My yeah, wife the, watched the episode and wasn't jealous, and it really hurt my feelings. No, you know why the difference jealous. is that someone else wrote and cast you, and that if you wrote and cast the person you're making out with, it might as well That's be not true. If someone else wrote it, but the woman was Alyssa Milano, or someone my wife thought that I would really be. Attracted oh, really? She to. was unattractive. The woman? No, she just, she was uh, not, she, not my oh, type. I, I saw that. She looked a lot like a guy. <laughs> she was a guy. Was it a was a guy that you made out, and that's why you just sounded like mind. Sarah Silverman right there. That's why it was almost a perfect Sarah Silverman really? impression. No one's ever said that. Uh, yeah, All right, yeah, let's like answer these questions. All right. One, the first one show. comes from Menachem Horowitz. Let me read the name. To your neighbor, it's it's, it's Manich. It's, it's not Manichim, buddy. I'll not, tell you that. It's, that's Menachem. No, edit that out. I will not allow that to get out. That he said mm. Manichim. <laughs> Manichim. Was, well, I once said. Uh, I really once said that I had a gig at a. At a synagogue. 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 I really did that. <laughs> and, I, and I wasn't kidding. It came out synagogue, and I went, oh, my God, that's synagogue. What is it? A minute, like a Dude, 10 I, seconds after I realized, but not in the moment. I don't do it as much as you because I'm smarter, but I, I've done it on my radio show. Did that hurt your feelings? I said. <laughs> Skill set. There is a fakeade of a, in, instead of facade I read it. It's a fake. Aid. I think I've done. Why is your that finger one? bleeding? I was just sitting on my hand. It's one of my issues. Are you serious? Menachem Horowitz. Bl- Hold on. There's nothing more interesting than the bloody oh, hand. I, 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 oh, that's a dry thing. Oh my oh, God! There's a lot there of blood. Episode? There's a lot of blood on your fingers. That's from uh, raking my backyard. That Did has you no grass on it? Commit murder before the podcast. And I had I had work gloves on when I did. This. Yeah, let's see if those gloves fit. If not, you must have quit. I'm going to keep the bloody thumb down. Oh my God, Menachem Horowitz. Okay, dear Joe. Last year I was diagnosed as a as a celiac. Let me do. That, I read that's these? what it says, though. Yeah, that's right. As a celiac, and had to make my whole diet gluten free. I feel for you. Mm-hmm. You're a uh, big personal trainer, a diet guy. Your wife's really into nutrition. What is he saying? He got diagnosed as celiac, and he had to make 
his whole diet gluten free. I feel yeah. for you because there was an episode that's based on the uh, where the doctor tells me I have high cholesterol and my blood pressure's high, yeah. and I changed my whole diet. You can change that easier than he can change his issue. I slipped back into my bad eating again. I ate a whole. <laughs> it's embarrassing. I ate my. I, it was either my son's or my daughter's uh, bunny. Chocolate bunny, oh, a wow. whole one this big. So glad you said, said chocolate it, bunny. It said like, it had, well, that is a weird issue. It, you it eat said, your <laughs> kid's pet. It said crunchy, and something about crunchy and chocolate. Oh my god! I ate a whole thing, and literally for two days, I felt like my gut was like, whoa, whoa. like I just felt fat. And that reminds me of when I ate my daughter's uh, guinea pig. <laughs> Delicious. She was upset with me. I'm not gonna lie. She's like, "Where is Georgie?" Have you ever had to change In your? My tum have you ever changed your whole diet? You've always no. been a pretty bad eater. You'll eat no, any, you eat true. anything. Not true. You used to back in the day when we do a gig. Remember how much you would eat at a comedy club? Chicken wings, fries, everything. I still eat those things, but not not. I'm. I'm do you get your careful. cholesterol checked? No, my cholesterol's all right though. Is it? No, I've, I've decided. How do you know that? It's good. I'm good. <laughs> You're, one and my of, you're afraid of dead do- also. doctors too? Because I get a vasectomy. Uh, what do we want to say to Menachem? Him? Uh, he just we're says that he him. feels for us. Yeah. So I guess we He's say. He's not really uh, asking a question. Celiac's a lot worse than what I Yeah, am. yeah, yeah. Well, high cholesterol could kill you. Not eating gluten sucks. I don't I, know that I buy all this anti gluten movement, by the way, but I mean, like, I. I pretty, I think it means you can't have pasta, and why live? You have to have gluten free pasta. Why right? live? Just kill, dare Menachem, kill yourself. Next question. Pete says Pete says you're gonna you should just die. Sorry, buddy. Because gluten free is terrible. I don't know what that means. Oh, I'm but... listening to people that are gluten free that change their life. They feel great. Yeah, they say locks now. They love Why would that be anything wrong with that, by the way? They love eating carrots. Why why are you making the editor's job so hard? Uh okay, the second one. Reverend Jay Goldstein. There's a lot of religious undertones with these names. Reverend Jay Goldstein, to control my OCD, I may or may not smoke weed. The answer depends on whether you are a cop or not. Mm. So he's saying he smokes pot. Yeah, well. So he, maybe that's why you don't dear have Dear Reverend Jay Goldstein, just make up a different name and be honest. How about that for some advice? Like you could be. You don't think that's his how name? How about you could be Rabbi. I mean, if It'd his be name funny is if it's Goldstein, it, he's not a reverend. That's what he's I was a think, rabbi. That's what I was thinking. Yeah, I'd be so. like saying Rabbi Joe Joe Mazzilli. <laughs> like it could yeah, exactly. happen. Exactly. It could not. It would be illegal. <laughs> could you be an Italian rabbi? Uh, so well, let's answer the issue about, you know, uh, I think marijuana. Uh, uh, I, ha, 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 le, that is uh, le, 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 le. that is very so- Hebrew ha, sounding. Ha, yeah. That's, la, good. Ha, 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 that's good. Oh, a white <laughs> chunk just flew out of your mouth. That was spit. All right. Uh, let's answer this question. I, uh, we, Believe it or not, marijuana... wait, wait, I just thought of a joke off of the last question, but I once was selling my CDs. I was doing a temple gig, and I asked some- At a some, synagogue? At a synagogue. And at a I synagogue? Asked, I asked the guy, where do I sell my CDs? Like, where's your lobby? And he yeah. goes, you mean the ha 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 Like, they had a-, a they name had, for it. They had a name for it. It yeah. was- I go, the, no, the lobby. He goes, the ha 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 I was, I was on the floor dying. And then I told it on stage, and uh, I thought they weren't going to laugh, and they did. Oh yeah, that's good. It's like when you do a black audience. Sometimes, if be honest, if you're if you say something you thought honest. about black people in an honest way, they'll oh, think yeah, it's yeah. hysterical. That's because that's all anybody wants. Yeah, it's not especially uh, minorities who are discriminated against and know that you feel that way anyway. Yeah, so just be honest. So uh, he may or may not. So Jay Goldstein may or may not smoke weed. So, so you're saying is I marijuana should, good? Can that for, help my OCD? I don't know. I've not seen that marijuana uh, treats OCD. I do think, for me, it treats my attention issues. I don't think I have severe ADD or ADHD, but I do think that I focus in on a task uh, better if uh, if using that as a medication. Really? Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm thinking of trying ADD medication. You should think of trying some Kush. <laughs> Gorilla Kush. Mist. I thought you meant Rebecca Kush. That's the name of a weed strain that I just made up. All right. Well, let's get off a of Reverend Jay Goldstein that you don't believe is a, is his real name, obviously. Uh, I think you know Pastor Menachem Horowitz. If you smoke weed, what's going to happen is your OCD went away, but you can't leave your basement and video games. That's I. I feel like such a terrible stereotype. Is that a? That's yeah. not a true stereotype about weed smokers. I no, guess. No. I just feel like if I smoked pot every day, I'd be like. 
<laughs> like that you why do you always turn into uh, that guy people who smoke marijuana know what it does to them some people it demotivates them some people it makes them paranoid some people think it makes them more productive than any other time and i'm of the lattice category generally i i definitely believe that and i think that when you look at the last you know three presidents they smoked weed and you could list a whole a uh, list of really hardworking, very motivated people who smoked a lot of marijuana in their life, and it's just that anecdotally, uh, we've all, we all know someone who who's lazy. Okay, we- I agree with you. You're not a lazy pot smoker. Good for you. I'm saying I would be. I know me. I'd definitely be buying video games while I was buying pot. <laughs> all right, let's move on to the next one. Same guy. Big janky hen one. I love that one. Big Janky Hen One says, I have what you would call reverse OCD. When things are too perfect or too clean, it freaks me out. Mm. It's a real problem because my wife has OCD. Soon as she gets soon as she gets home, she has to sweep the floor. That makes the hairs on the back of my neck stand up. So I have to get some barrettes from my two year old daughter and scatter them about. He puts barrettes in the hairs of his neck that stand up? That seems like a weird solution. <laughs> Oh, he scatters the barrettes across the freshly swept floor. I'm wondering because I knew, Yikes, I knew you— Opposites attract, but that is a bad opposite thing to have of your partner. Well, I was going to say, but I one don't know— One who likes things clean, one who likes things messy. Well, I was wondering what your wife likes things because I knew you before you were married, and you are one of the messiest guys yeah, I've no, ever seen in my an life. Yeah, no, issue. This new me, though, is working on that because I'm mindful. Now, your wife is not My messy? wife is a, pretty immaculate. She's not OCD. She's not a neat nick, but she— you don't the rooms aren't messy. They're not left messy for very long. Maybe half a day. The mm-hmm. kid, you know, kid but but no she and I'm yes, I'm a slob and she hates it. But just to be clear, unlike a big janky hen the uh the writer, I hate it too. I'm not okay with my messes. The gross, immature and stupid. And right. I certainly don't want to model that for my children. That's what I used to tell my wife about she used to go, "You're so vain. Stop looking at yourself in the mirror." Mm-hmm. And I used to go, "I'm looking in horror." I'm not looking going, yeah, look at me. I'm looking going, oh. Yeah, I'm looking at you right now. I can oh, tell you. God, I hate that bump on my nose. I yeah. just stare have you at ever, it. Have you ever noticed how long your skull is? You should yeah, I get OCD Someone about Someone wrote that in one of the comments. I'm surprised that one didn't get pulled by official comments. Someone wrote, Joe Matarese has a long face. Do they? <laughs> I was like, thanks. You know what a balaclava is? No. It's like a head scarf with just the opening for your face. Uh-huh. Do you think they I have one, one for you? That's funny. What do you think? My chin would just dangle out of it. Yeah, the normal one. Your balaclava is made of a large man's bathrobe because your head is so long. Uh, Who's that comedian that does that talk and he goes, I hate my nose? I don't know. I can't get past the blood all over your finger every time you bring it up. Put that finger away. What's it called? A balaclava? Balaclava. I I can't get a balaclava. That's how he would do it. What the uh, hell is that comedian's name? I don't name? know, but let's talk more about what else you're insecure about, about your face. Uh, what else? I My could... no-top lip I hate. I yeah. can't decide if I should grow the goatee What did Jim Norton say about it? your mouth in a roast? He said I, it... Um, in a roast, Jim Norton like a, said, what about your mouth? Well, one of them's too disgusting to say, say on camera, but they can cut it out. He said, I think when I turn to the side, my mouth looks like a 10-year-old girl's vagina. Oh. Jesus. And he said that it looks like an my mouth looks like an Asian's eye. <laughs> <laughs> that was hilarious. <laughs> Neither are really I can't even picture either and I have a 10-year-old who I see naked every day. I don't get it. It's I'm, upsetting I'm me. I'm so hoping my daughter doesn't have my no top lip. Certainly not with a goatee on it. <laughs> um hopefully she has your wife's attributes. Not on. But you were uh my wife could be opposite to me because I'm a little OCD. My wife's not messy, but she does a couple of things I think a messy person would do. And it would and tell me if this would bother you or you wouldn't care. Oh, she leaves cupboard doors open. Yes, and I she do. and she doesn't close door like That's drawers. Crazy. She just goes and gets her yeah, clothes I do that. and then walks away. She goes, "I'm a parent." I'm like. What did she you, was the house on fire? Ah, that's great. Like, how long does it take to close a door? What's that, about a quarter of a second? That's got to be in your act. That's good. It's no, not. I'm that. I'm that way. You leave the Georgia's yeah, open yeah, I walk do away. I'm, I'm like, bad. It's so weird looking. They'll come into the kitchen after it's her. Very Every strange. cabinet's open. It's very strange. I'll tell, the, I'm gonna, like, uh, tell you how your wife may feel. When you call your spouse on that, there's no defense for it. My wife has... The funniest my wife ever is, and she, she doesn't make a lot of jokes, mm-hmm. uh, is when she makes fun of my 
laziness. And she'll be like, pick up my underwear. And she'll be like, I don't understand why you couldn't have done this. And then she'll tell me like how far her arm travels to yeah, drop it yeah, in the yeah, dirty yeah. hamper. True. Like you couldn't make your underwear get from six feet over there to there. Right. And it's hilarious. And it's like, there's nothing I can say. There's nothing. And that's why it's hilarious. Your your answer right there is, was there a fire? Was there a baby choking? Like, why would you not close that? Which, close it. Yeah. You just made me think of another one, and I just forgot it. Another, oh, the, she does this water thing. She always has to have water by her nightstand, like a glass of water. Yeah, that's, and that's then she leaves normal. them all over the house. There's, uh, and I call them water bombs. Yeah. Because they're always getting knocked over. If I'm like cleaning, I'm dusting, wham, I hit it, tips over, water everywhere. I go, I don't mind you needing your water. Just drink it. It's interesting. Stop dynamic, drinking that. one sip and leaving it for three weeks. You should marry my wife and I'll marry yours. Or we can just have sex with each other's wife. But anyway, it would be funny to, <laughs> to, for us to swap because Stephanie and I are messy and, and you and Val are. She's not really messy, clean. though. My wife's not Sounds messy. Sounds like she's messy. She's not. Just the water she glass. She would hate you talking about this, right? No, because I'm oh. defending her. She's not messy. Right. She just has a couple of things. Okay, I'm and a wreck. I'm a mess. Yeah, I'm not. Uh, I can't stand. I it. never knew that. I, I had a girl, you, and we've been on the road together for a long time, staying in hotels and stuff. And then we were married for a year and lived together. I remember dating a girl who was super crazy with Which one? cleanliness. You never met her. This is Come when on. I first started yeah. as an open micer. I was probably 24 years old. How many women I- have you been with? Like 115, I think you told me. <laughs> a lot of women. I don't know anybody who's been with more women than Joe Menorese. I do. I know a lot of guys that have. I don't know. I crush my numbers. Really? I don't. Have, I don't have crazy. You got numbers. crazy numbers. I got. You if have you have seven? crazy numbers, then I got. What do you have nine? I, I think in the high teens. Really? Yeah, yeah. Well, that's because you're you were gay for part of your life. Um. The, well, that one. <laughs> well, those it. numbers don't count. That, that doesn't even make sense. I don't, I don't get because those numbers with, will count. I don't count the dudes. I'm yeah, with. Are you not that counting the a, dudes? That would be hundreds of thousands. Gay are guys you counting the dog licks in the ass. No, that that's that, just the ones. <laughs> I made the cameraman I laugh. I. Uh, that's why so I love. love that's why I, I just. I know I'm not gay because I'd like to be gay because that the gay. You could sex rack life the numbers awesome. up. It's awesome. I mean, there's no emotions. It's just like a hand job. You see each other the next day. Boom. Our store doesn't matter. Yeah. I bet. I don't know that. A friend of mine told me that. Oh, so let's get to another question here. Sort of veering off. Have you ever been with a guy sexually? No. Yeah, you have. You were in a threesome with a guy and his semen got on you. <laughs> yes or no? Yes or no? You want to move on to the next question? You want to answer that one? <laughs> yes or no? That was with a girl. And, and there was a guy. The girl there had too. semen? Yeah, it was a gangbang. Did the guy. It was an early gangbang. Did bang. the guy's semen get on you? Yes. So. It arced. That's gay. It arced. There's nothing wrong with it at all. There's nothing wrong. I'm not judging it. I'm Why just saying you, you're you gayer than it I am. It hit the girl, then went in the air. Nothing. That's, then the, that's how you remember it. That's what Because you want to justify it. You think if sperm nothing but hits a, g- a girl first before it hits you, it doesn't mean that you're gay? <laughs> in that moment, you were gay. You're not gay, but in that moment, you were gay. And I've never... I've never had anything remotely close to that moment. Welcome back to things Pete can't talk about on his indie talk show. That's for you're sure. Just, you're just loving this. I am. Going overboard with jizz hitting my head. That's been talked about on the podcast a long time. One time I did a You dirt, should have that guy on. I did a cringe humor show and told that story. Did a live show for the cringe humor people. And it was so dirty that I couldn't do anything after it. I couldn't follow it. it I, did, just I actually did the, your bit at my alma mater. You did it? All right, so here's crazy smoky stories. Hey, Joe, is this all acting, or are you sharing things from your life? Now, this one doesn't make sense to me. Like, why can't you share something from your life and then act in it? Like, It's still acting. It's like yeah. someone said to me once, like, I wanted to put an acting reel together of the whole web series. But that's not you acting. You're just playing you. Playing me is acting. Jerry Seinfeld on Seinfeld is playing Jerry Seinfeld, and he's acting. To Louis some C.K. Extent, I mean, not... is playing Louis C.K. Well, yeah, but you're doing the same thing they did, and you're exaggerating situations. But we're acting. You are. I'm no, reading. I'm but doing. It is, I'm, don't not you ma- think... I'm not talking. I'm doing do dialogue agree. and making it s- real. You are, and you right. do a great job. And but some guys aren't it's... good at that, though. Um, it's easier generally to do you. I don't think so. Come on. Look at, I bet a guy like, I know comedians that are so good at sketch what do you think comedy what do you that think? they can't do themselves. You ever met around those guys? No, they do so much they character shit. You know what's, so so you're telling me the role um, that. Which Jerry Maguire Leonardo played DiCaprio, in everything. Leonardo DiCaprio, what is Jerry Maguire playing everything? Uh, I just said that, didn't I? <laughs> 
What is Tom Cruise is basically playing himself in Not a way? Not true at all. He plays a ton of different roles. I hate that because they have a Tom name. Cruise. They have a different name. I love Tom Cruise a lot. So do I. I think he's a great actor. He plays a lot of different. I'm roles. giving. Yeah, but I mean, all right. Okay. Are we? I don't know. If we're answering crazy smoke. What's that movie that, that starts with an M? That movie, Magnolia. Tom Cruise is great in that movie. Yes. Yeah. Respect the cock. Now what? That's what that's what he says in that. Oh, I thought you wanted to meet him. Respect your cock. So. Uh, so yeah, that's my answer to that question. Uh, yes, it is real life. From everything is real. It's exaggerated, and we are acting. There is dialogue. There's a script that was written about my real life. I literally fed Andres wrote, and I wrote a lot of the all the episodes, and we had a couple of people do some punch ups. Stop! Please stop that. What? And but uh, yeah, so we uh, acted. And, uh, yeah, How, did this I answer question that question correct? from Gen 112. Or you can read the last one. Gen 112. How big is your dick really, Joe? <laughs> Go ahead. Answer that one. <laughs> Gen 112. Is that your ex? Isn't that her name, Jen? Uh, easy, easy. Isn't her birthday January 12th? Easy E 989. You're not going to answer that? No, not answer You have a legendary cock, and you're <laughs> weird about it. You On your own podcast, you won't answer how big your cock is. <laughs> Why is it legendary? Didn't That's, I get mad at you once for bringing this up you at, always get at mad the at me Stan up, Comedy Club? Weird. You were yelling this across the stand once. Yep. <laughs> Easy E989. This is really good. Been feeling down about my studies lately and have been questioning if it is right for me. What's you referring Thanks. to? I don't really know. Oh, great. Do you guys have any idea what episode that's referring to? This is a, oh, me quitting probably at the end, hitting the wall, final episode. I was thinking about quitting comedy. Uh, that's right. I remember feeling, when you told me you, about that. You didn't see that episode? What I episodes did you miss? I, like, maybe Mr. two. Mr. I totally. binged watched uh, one. Uh, maybe two totally. I, I, I binge watched the first one. I watched almost every episode, but maybe two, I think. You probably, that, that, yeah. It gets better and better. So but I know about the, that in real life. Did you I see the Goodfellas episode? That's the other one that I missed. I I did see that one, though. See when you sat down with your episode? financial... Uh, no. You missed a lot of them. I don't think so. I think you, I maybe missed two or three. You didn't see hitting the wall. Did you see Bell's palsy? Yeah. Yep. Okay, you probably missed I was there three. for the taping. I'm in that one for yes, a you split are. second. There's, I think there's three after that. Yeah. I'm not so, wearing deodorant. I've been feeling down about that? my studies lately, and I've been questioning me? if it is right for me. Thanks. Let's answer easy 989. It's not. I don't know what the hell he's talking about. Hey, what's the, he's talking about... Uh, He's been feeling down about his studies. He's been questioning Easy. if it's right for me. Same advice I gave to... He's uh, thinking of quitting school, it sounds Menachem. like. Menachem, kill yourself. <laughs> no. Thanks for watching. It's, this it's... has been another episode of Oprah. <laughs> with Joe Manneries. He's thinking about stopping school. What would be your uh, advice? I don't He's know. I down. don't know. We'd yeah, never we never answer his question without knowing. I mean... We don't know you, Easy 989. Uh, I'll tell you this. I uh, think college is always a good thing to stay with. I wish I had a, a college education. You per, have one. Pursue two a year, job. right? I, I just gave the commencement speech. For your two-year school? For my college that I went to. It must uh, be easy to get to speak at a two-year school. Or do you it, just go, hey, I... Uh, so now I have a job, and, you, and they go. Well, you can speak. Would you like to speak? <laughs> it's now a four year. Actually, do you want <laughs> to four years now? Do you want to speak every year at our school? That because you, you have a job. It was either me. I'm working at a uh, or a, 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 a famous footwear. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to speak <laughs> about shoes at our? Uh, Camden County. I go to Cam. I went to Camden County Community College for Cobble seven skill months. I was, Cobble skill. I was failing out of community college. It was Ugh. too hard. That's a sign you might have a learning disability, right? Uh, no, it's a commitment issue more than anything else. Uh, and I would tell easy. I was and, lost and, during, and, and, when and they, everybody else find a job you enjoy doing, and you, you'll not have to work a day in your life. So Am I, I getting paid for this, by the way? Night. You might get a couple bucks. I might pick some stuff out of your teeth and just let you smell it off of my finger. <laughs> <laughs> uh so, uh, Pete, thanks so much, man. I think I think we nailed a podcast. We did too. We need to uh, just plug a date. What should they listen to? Uh oh, Pete's going going full camera. <laughs> Pete just said bye to the one guy. Uh, that just my radio show. It. Yeah, I'm doing a lot of stand up. Uh, stand up Pete Dominic dot com. But really, want people to listen to my radio show. If I have time to plug anything, it's Stand Up with Pete Dominic, where we talk about you, uh, the most important issues that affect you, your family, your community, your, and your planet. Yes, listen to Pete every day on Sirius XM. Thanks for uh, for listening to another Smell this. fixing show. Smell this. Uh, download the apps, become a premium member. They're free downloads for those apps. 
And uh, come on, Pete, seriously. I'm touching Joe's seriously. inner me. thigh. Get he hates it me. so much. I think it's funny as you're trying to plug and end the show. Just keep touching you. <laughs> Look at your elbow skin. Have you noticed that? Uh, yes, it's like a sharp elbow. Can you see that. Oh my god! Very ashy for a Put white some guy. Lotion on that. Uh, oh, that was racist, by the way. Was it? Yeah. Is it? it? Not racist as much as ignorant. Was it? To think that somehow white people have drier skin. Wasn't there a character called Ashy Larry? Yeah, because you can see on brown skin, dry skin easier, and so that's one reason they take better care of the skin right. than we do because we're fucking pink. All right. Well, I'll, I'll my next the next video will have my apologize. I apologize for that last comment. I did not mean that. I, just I think meant I just made that up. that I have ashiness on my elbow. Okay, I need it. I need to put some cream on it. Ah, uh, uh, the, the the sponsors. I thank you guys. Uh, 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 <laughs> tweaked Audio. Go to tweakedaudio.com uh, or just click on the banner on joematteris.com and you can put fixing Joe in the promo code window. Get your discount. 30% off, okay, everybody, and come and see me this Friday night. I will be at the downtown in Red Bank, New Jersey, mm. doing one 8 o'clock show. Because, okay? I, because as, I passed on it. As I end every podcast, I hope by Pete and I trying to fix ourselves that we help fix you guys a little bit. I love my wife. I love my kids. He feels the same way about his wife and kids. Keep downloading the podcast. What are you laughing at? And, uh, and, and check out the web series on officialcomedy.com. There's 13 episodes up there. Check it out. All right. See you guys. I do a radio Bye. show about important you. issues. <laughs> <laughs>